Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and to today's video which is all about dressing for hot weather. Now the irony of today's video is that when I decided to film this it was indeed glorious hot weather and very fitting for today's topic, however when I look outside our patio doors right now all I see is rain. So unfortunately for those of you who are also looking at rain right now, I do apologise but I'm sure we will get another heat wave very soon. We're actually due a week of solid rain so I shall be referring back to my what to wear in the rain video. But let's go back to hot weather because that of course is the topic for today's video. Now when I say hot weather I know there's going to be lots of different variations of hot weather for different people. It's going to depend on where you live in the world, how much heat your body can take, all of those kind of factors. For me personally, once it starts to get to about 27 degrees and above and there is no wind and we're talking city heat, which is thick and muggy and grim basically, that's when I start to class that as super hot weather and when I start to look at the tips which I'm about to go through. Okay so tip number one is all about fabric. So the best kind of fabrics to wear in super hot weather and actually to be honest even just in summer in general are natural and breathable fabrics. So we're talking things like cotton, linen and even fabrics like cellulose. Cellulose is made from wood pulp so it's still a natural fibre. Now the fibres and the fabrics that you want to avoid are synthetic fibres because these fibres will not allow your skin to breathe, they will trap heat and they will just make you hotter and sweatier. So this is stuff like nylon, polyester, acetate and acrylic and these are also fabrics that I would say to bear in mind when you're looking at wearing items of clothing that have lining so perhaps smarter trousers that have lining, blazers, even some dresses. The outer part of them might be made from linen or cotton but always check what your lining is made out of because if you're wearing let's say a linen or a cotton dress but it's actually lined in polyester there's no point in wearing linen or cotton at all because it's the polyester which is just going to trap that heat within your body and just make you even hotter than you already are. Moving on to tip number two and this is all about your underwear because this is equally as important as your outerwear. So the first thing I would say is to start by ditching any padded bras. If it's a hot day just do not reach for those padded bras because that is, I mean obviously they vary in thickness and the padding within a padded bra is always synthetic and that is again just going to be causing sweaty boobs. No one likes sweaty boobs, it just feels uncomfortable, you feel sticky. Ooh! And again those synthetics just start to trap heat so you'll actually start to warm up the rest of your body just starting from the boob area. Now my next little tip within this entire tip, a tip within a tip, is and I know this isn't going to be appropriate for everyone but I only have an A cup so for me it's totally doable and that is just to ditch bras all together. I am a big fan and you guys know this of vests, a racer back vest. I will often wear those without a bra at all because you're actually having less fabric in there to just get in the way. I don't really need any support when it comes to the boob region and again I know that's not going to be appropriate for everyone. If you do need support there are vests out there that actually have like a little built-in, I think they call it a shelf. Don't get the vests that have the padding in because again that's going back to the padded bra situation, it's just going to trap more heat. But there are vests that have almost like a little elasticated shelf, kind of like sportswear but aim for the cotton versions. But if you need something with even more support, perhaps you need something more structured and more sturdy, then I would advise going for underwear, again, not padded, but something made out of 100% cotton. There's so many different options out there for underwear that is sturdy and strong, but it's made from breathable cotton. So again, just stay away from those synthetic fibers, from padding, 
And if you can, just ditch the bras all together. And all of that also applies to pants, although I'm not gonna tell you guys to ditch the pants. If you wanna go commando, that's great. I'm personally not a fan, especially when wearing skirts and dresses. It's just my biggest nightmare that they blow up and then people get a very X-rated view. Just stay away from any kind of synthetic fibers. Often lace tends to be synthetic and just go for nice, breathable cotton. And if you're buying new pants as well, always check that the gusset, sorry, I love the word gusset. Always check that the gusset is made from cotton as well because often they'll add in a bit of synthetic fiber for stretch in the gusset. So just check that. Just as my personal recommendation, I usually head to Marks and Spencer for my cotton pants. And now on to tip number three, which is to cover up. Now I know it is very tempting in super hot weather to go and essentially strip off and wear as fewer clothes and as tinier clothes as possible. So shorts and vests and all that kind of thing. And it's great. And if you don't mind catching a bit of sun, obviously that is awesome. However, covering up and wearing looser, lighter layers is actually a much better option. And this is because our skin actually retains and absorbs heat. So by having a looser layer, let's say like a nice oversized linen shirt or a cotton shirt, which is nice and loose fitting, you actually get a gap between your skin and the fabric, which can cause an airflow, which as science then determines, will cool you down, especially if you have a slight dewy sweat to you as well. This is your body's coping mechanism of dealing with the heat, but by covering up and wearing that light layer, you create almost like a little air conditioning system that then runs through your clothes. And of course, another bonus of covering up means that you have a little bit more added protection from the sun's harmful UV rays, but always, always, always wear SPF, even if you're covered up as well, especially on your face. Moving on to tip number four, which is all about shoes. Now this tip is more of a what not to wear, and I can't stress this enough, although I have a feeling that every one of you out there watching this will have been there and done that with this point. The point is never, never, ever wear new shoes during a heat wave or a really hot weather spell your feet will not thank you for it. In fact, you'll have the opposite problem. Your feet will hate you for trying to break in new shoes during a heat wave. Feet tend to swell in hot weather. In fact, many different areas can swell. I'm sure every person is different. For me personally, I often have issues with my hands and my fingers, which is why I usually have to take for the hottest months of the year. So end of June, July and August, I often have to take off the two smallest of my marital rings because my fingers just turn into little cocktail sausages, if you will, and they just start to throb, which is why I need to remove those rings. But yes, feet will swell in the heat, especially if you're up and about, sort of walking around if you're a busy person and wearing a pair of shoes that you haven't broken in yet or that your feet aren't familiar with is just not a good idea at all. By all means, if you get new sandals or something along those lines in the summer, try and break them in at home in an evening or in a morning where the temperatures are much cooler or if you have air conditioning, an added bonus. But I often say as well to help break in shoes, try and pop on a couple of pairs of like thickish socks, which I know is not ideal come the summertime, but it just helps to sort of expand and account for any foot swelling in the summer months. And also with trainers and any other form of sort of closed toe shoe like loafers, I would always say to wear cotton socks. You can get loads of different sort of barely there no-show socks just so that your feet have something to absorb the sweat. Otherwise you're gonna end up with very, very, very smelly shoes. And now my fifth and final tip is wearing lighter colors. Now there is a fair bit of science out there somewhere by people more knowledgeable than I when it comes to science about how lighter colors actually reflect heat or reflect the sun and how they're actually less absorbent of heat in comparison to darker colors like black and navy and any other sort of really dark shades. Which is very unfortunate for me because I love black. Now, 
I know there's lots of you guys who are very similar to me and even when it comes to the summer months you love wearing a black outfit in which case I would just revert back to some of the previous points so when you're wearing black clothing in summer and on super hot days just look for things which are made of cotton and linen and also going back to that point about looser fitting clothing I always think it's a good idea to get if you're having some darker colours in your wardrobe go for slightly looser fitting garments otherwise it's a good idea to stock up on those whites and those neutrals. And there we have it. I'm sure you guys have heard many of those tips before but I am just here to reinforce them for when the heat hopefully comes back at some point. Thank you as always for watching and I will see you next time.